Hi, I'm attorney Eric Traben. I'm a former state of Florida prosecutor, and I'm a private criminal defense attorney at Lucid Legal, serving all of Central Florida. Thanks for joining us on another one of our episodes. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more great videos. In honor of the release of Warner Brothers' new movie, The Batman, on March 4th, we're going to take a classic episode of Batman, The Trial of Batman, and review it for you today. This is a classic episode where Batman is captured by his rogues gallery and put on trial at Arkham Asylum, where they try to decide whether or not he is guilty for causing the problems of the supervillains in Gotham City. Obviously, there's a lot of silliness that's going to go on in the video. Uh, the cartoon was originally made for kids back in the 90s, but there's a lot of good stuff in here that I think is really entertaining and sheds a light onto some of our legal issues that we'll talk about. So let's take a look and let's begin. Trial. The prisoner will stand. We're starting off in a courtroom. Pamela Lillian Isley, District Attorney Van Dorn has asked that the maximum sentence of life imprisonment be imposed upon you. However, as your apprehension came at the hands of the Batman hmm. and not a recognized agent of the law, this court has no choice but to return you to Arkham Asylum, where it is hoped you will complete your rehabilitation. So this is a really interesting part. We start off with Pamela Isley, AKA Poison Ivy, in court. The new district attorney wants her to get the maximum punishment possible, but the judge says because the Batman is not a recognized officer of the law, he has no choice but to instead return her to Arkham. Now, here's where that doesn't entirely make a lot of sense. It sounds like the judge wanted to punish her, but based on the technicality of Batman not being a police officer, instead he's not able to. If we were to actually apply the law, it's that Batman's not a law enforcement officer who's going to respond to a subpoena. He's not going to show up to court. He's not going to testify. And no one can actually accept testimony from Batman because nobody knows who he is. In the absence of any witnesses who are capable of testifying, the state and the judge would have almost no choice but to dismiss the charges. So if that's what's happening, then why does the judge have no choice but to return Pamela Isley to Arkham? Perhaps she had a probation violation, and if she were to be convicted of that violation, she could get a new punishment, but her current sentence had her as a condition of probation, perhaps, staying at Arkham Asylum for rehabilitation. So there's, there's a kernel of an idea here that's pretty interesting and does brush up against the law correctly, but the way it's being explained doesn't make a lot of sense. Really, they want to send the message that lawyers are able to engage in trickery and there's this technicality that's letting a crazy supervillain out into the streets instead of Arkham, which they acknowledge must be a joke. But... It's not simply that Batman isn't a law enforcement officer. People can make a citizen's arrest. It's that Batman doesn't follow the law or respect the law, and he's not going to show up to testify in court. So let's go on. Now it looks like we're underneath somewhere. I think that's going to be in Arkham Asylum. There aren't a whole lot of lights in Arkham Asylum. It's very dark in there, but all of Gotham is like that. The original and best Harley Quinn. Poison Ivy seemed pretty thrilled that the judge couldn't punish her and send her to prison, but now she's pretty depressed about being here in Arkham. judge and jury with no regard for the legal system. <laughs> the district attorney is 100% correct about Batman there. Now, the first, the opinion that he's creating the villains, that's what we're going to have to watch the episode for. That's what the trial is all about. Now, the second part, that Batman has no regard for the legal system, that's really kind of impossible to even debate, right? Batman's whole purpose is to operate outside of the law. Now, as a lawyer, I can't condone that. 
as a comic book fan, I think it's great. But absolutely, he has no respect for the law whatsoever. He certainly doesn't follow the Constitution. As a non-state actor, he's not bound by the Constitution. He won't show up for court. And unfortunately, uh, for the prosecutors in Gotham, but fortunately for all of us, the law actually prevents people from being convicted and sent to prison without witnesses who are willing to appear in court to testify. Anyone who's busted by the Batman knows in advance all they have to do is demand a trial. Batman won't show up and the case goes away. They're already contributing to a city that has major problems with organized crime and an overworked judicial system. And now they're just sending more cases that ultimately have to get dropped because Batman doesn't show up. Come on, Batman. Not cool. Sounds like you want to put Batman on trial. Believe me, I'd like nothing better. And you know what? The district attorney has every basis to put Batman on trial. He's a vigilante. Strong words. It's got to stop, Jim. As Gotham's new district attorney, I can't allow your pet not to run loose in my city. I mean it. Janet, it's a war zone out there, and Batman is our best weapon. And I say he's a drug the city keeps taking to avoid facing reality. That also sounds like a pretty spot-on observation from the district attorney. Batman is a little bit like a drug. He's exciting, he's a lot of fun, and he's able to handle some of the big problems that pop up in Gotham from time to time without really allowing them to do the hard work of addressing the underlying conditions that led to all of the crime that creates the supervillains and created Batman. Speak of the devil. The East Side Skulls are ready to declare war on the other gangs. Old news. My department's already planning a sting to catch the Skulls' leader. Don't bother. Look, Batman captured the, the Skulls' leader. It's obviously the Skulls are a terrible gang of Gotham. And here we see that he's wrapped up the gang leader, you know, like a Christmas present for the new DA, hanging upside down. Classic Batman move, not really okay to do for the police, right? Uh, was there a warrant for his arrest yet? Did they actually obtain that? Or did Batman just kidnap someone who hasn't officially been charged with a crime? What are the implications if the district attorney decides to continue to accept this arrestee and prosecute the gang leader based on Batman, who's an acting vigilante operating outside the law. You know, Batman might have some positive motivations. But the fact of the matter is, he's, he's really causing more problems than he's solving. He makes everyone feel good by beating up a bad guy or hanging them upside down, but he's, he's kind of bringing these problems to the prosecutor who looks at it and says, I can't do anything with this. I have to drop it. Very cute, mister. You want to support law and order, you take off that mask and put on a uniform. Or he could be a lawyer if he wants to support law and order. It's not the only way to support law and order is by being a cop. You hear me, Batman? This is the last time! Well, she really doesn't like Batman. Next time I see him, it'll be a whole different story. She's just going to leave that that guy hanging there. Hello, Bruce. Janet, I'm so glad we're able to meet on such short notice. Classic Bruce Wayne move. It seems every place I look, there's our crusading DA leading the campaign to rid our city of Batman. Oh, please. He's the last person I want to talk about tonight. Oh, sorry. Still, even you have to admit, Batman's come through now and then. But look at the lunatic fringe he's created. The Joker, Two-Face, Poison Ivy, and the rest. Batman's responsible for every one of them. Excuse me, Miss Van Dorn, but your office just called. They said it's an emergency. I'm sorry, Bruce. I won't be a minute. So here we just heard the DA's indictment, no pun intended, of Batman. She just listed several different supervillains, Joker, Two-Face, that she believes Batman created. Now, I think it's fair to conclude that in most stories, all of those villains came into being after Batman. Now, whether or not that's enough to prove causation, let's find out. We're not at the trial yet. Take your time. Uh, 
Uh, excuse me, have you seen Miss Van Dorn? Not in the last half hour, sir. Look! Must be trouble. The bat signal. Hmm. It's Van Dorn's. It was dropped on the front desk 20 minutes ago. It only took 30 minutes for her, the prosecutor, to go out somewhere, get kidnapped, and then have her glasses case dropped off to Commissioner Gordon as a message to get Batman. These criminals operate quickly and efficiently. You have to admire that. You actually get to see two of Gotham's elected district attorneys on screen together. You've got Van Dorn, who is the current district attorney, and you've got her predecessor, Harvey Dent, who became Two-Face. So obviously this is a law-focused episode. We know that in this episode it's the trial of Batman, and we've got two prosecutors. So I think it's fair to, to say that they're both going to be featured prominently in this episode. So here we have it. There's a trial where Batman is going to be the defendant. The prosecutor, the elected district attorney, Van Dorn, is going to take the role of defense attorney for a major uh, twist. And the former district attorney, Harvey Dent, now Two-Face, is the prosecutor. As a side note, Batman was drugged and is now in a straitjacket. They had every opportunity to remove his mask and reveal the identity of Bruce Wayne, but didn't. By the very least, we see that the supervillains in Batman are not the smartest people in the world. They could have done this from the beginning and saved the trial afterwards, but it's a cartoon. This is insane. Me defending you? As far as I'm concerned, you belong in here with them. Hey, that's not very uncommon for lawyers. Whether or not a lawyer believes that their client is actually guilty is irrelevant. In fact, the best thing for any criminal defense attorney is to focus purely on the law and the evidence in the case and not think about where their client should go. But certainly there are some defense attorneys who might have strong feelings about some of their clients. And yet a professional lawyer can set those feelings aside and serve the law and serve their client. Can Ms. Van Doren do that? Let's find out. You've got to go through with it. It's their game and their rules. Let's go moving. Batman doesn't really sound very confident with his lawyer. Indeed. Can't keep the judge waiting. No, never, ever, ever keep the judge waiting, especially if the judge happens to be a homicidal maniac who dresses like a clown. You've said it yourself, lady. So, we're facing him before the bar to face our justice. And me? Basic 50-50 option. You get him off, you both go free. He goes down, you take the fall with him. Amusing idea, what? Kidnapping you to be Batman's attorney? Personally, I suggested a quick slug between the eyes, but I lost the coin toss. <laughs> This is a totally inappropriate courtroom. Aside from the fact that it's filled with inmates from Arkham Asylum, a courtroom is supposed to be a professional place. You can't have people in the gallery screaming and hooting and hollering like that. You gotta have some order and decorum for crying out loud. But I guess that's what happens if you've got a trial being run by criminally insane maniacs.
There are still some courtrooms in Florida where the deputies will announce, oh, yay, oh, yay, before the judge comes out. It's pretty old-fashioned. You don't see it a lot anymore. But every once in a while in some parts of the state, you will. This is just a callback to that classic uh, announcement of the judge taking the bench. I don't think this jury is fair and impartial. We've got Scarecrow, Riddler, Harley Quinn, the Mad Hatter, Poison Ivy, and Killer Croc. Now, in any jury selection, the judge, the criminal defense attorney, and the prosecutor are all going to inquire whether any potential jurors have any knowledge of the defendant. Do they know that person? Do they have any biases against that person? And by fleshing that through and eliminating anyone who may actually know or have any idea about the person who's charged with the crime, can they help to eliminate any potential bias or impropriety? These clearly are not going to be fair and impartial, but I didn't think we were going to be. And now all rise for the most honorable, most benevolent... you got to rise for the judge. Okay, now that's not how judges are supposed to work. They can't come in and declare guilty. And in fact, if a criminal defendant believes that the judge has already exhibited bias or an opinion as to their guilt, then they may be able to have that judge removed from handling the case. Um, so we call that a recusal. Generally, if the judge does do or say something that calls into doubt whether they would be willing to give the defendant a fair trial or themselves be fair and impartial, then you can do a motion to recuse to have the judge removed from the case. Certainly, if I was Batman's lawyer, I would want to do that. But I also think, considering he got kidnapped and drugged and is put underneath Arkham Asylum with the Joker doing the trial, that you know they may not follow the law on that one. But let's see how good of a lawyer Miss Van Dorn can be. Promised a chance to defend my client. Oh, very well. Like it'll make a difference. Mr. Prosecutor, make your opening statement. Now, obviously, I understand the Joker's point here, but a good lawyer will make the difference. Let's hear the opening statements from Mr. Harvey Dent. Not a good sign when the jury is cheering for the prosecutor. So apparently that's it. That was uh, Harvey Dent's opening statement. Now, something to remember, that was actually more of an argument. Opening statements are not the same things as arguments. The purpose of an opening statement is to tell the jury what they expect the evidence will show. You want to paint a picture and kind of give a sneak preview of what evidence to expect during the trial. But the arguments that you make about why that proves that someone is guilty, that's an argument that is saved for the conclusion of the trial. Now, Normally, I actually quite like that Harvey did his opening statement short and sweet. Most jurors are not thrilled to be having jury duty. And so talking for the sake of talking is only going to probably annoy the jury. And it's always a good tip to keep them happy and keep things moving. Harvey did that. He didn't draw any kind of objection for making an argument instead of just an opening statement. But again, I think Miss Van Dorn really is just trying to get out of there. But let's see how good of a job she can do. Okay, so it's actually supposed to be the prosecutor that calls the first witness and is the one calling all of the witnesses for the prosecution. Remember, in our system of justice, the defense does not have to prove anything. People are presumed innocent until proven guilty, and so the burden of proof rests entirely with the government or the state in all criminal prosecutions. The way they're treating it here 
is that it's the defense that has to call their witnesses. Although the defense can certainly call witnesses when it's their turn, the trial always starts at the prosecution. Now, we heard the judge, in this case, Judge Joker, already declare that Batman is guilty. So, again, maybe they're just reversing the rule since everything is topsy-turvy here. But by the very least, we can remember that in a prosecution, it's the prosecutor who calls their witnesses, not the other way around. Wait a minute. The first witness that's being called is one of the jurors. It's the Mad Hatter. So another big problem here. The jury is a totally different entity than witnesses. And you can't have a witness be a member of the jury that's obviously not going to be fair and impartial, especially when that witness sounds pretty much beholden to the prosecution. Proceed, counselor. I appreciate that the judge is being courteous. I appreciate that Judge Joker is being so courteous to the lawyers, however. Your friends claim that Batman drove you to be a criminal? He did. And yet, as I recall your case, you brainwashed and kidnapped a woman who rejected you. Batman forced me to do it. He was going to take her away from me. I had no choice. You could have respected her wishes and left her alone. Respecting her wishes instead of brainwashing and kidnapping her because she rejected her? That's crazy talk, says the Mad Hatter. Of course it's the Batman's fault. I don't think he's actually making a very good case for the prosecution, obviously. Killed her first. Let me just rewind that because that's such a good line. Let's see, does the Mad Hatter believe in respecting a woman's boundaries? Left her alone. I'd have killed her first. Someone's supposed to be writing this down. <laughs> so in a trial, there is supposed to be someone writing it down. There's actually supposed to be a court reporter who types down what every person in the courtroom is saying. And the reason for this is that when the case is over, they can have a written record of every word that was said so that any arguments that have to be made, any appeal that happens can be done correctly. And everything that happened in the trial can be subject to review. If it's not being written down, it's going to be impossible to review it. Now, you've probably heard from other shows and TV about someone wanting to strike something from the record. The Mad Hatter wanted to strike from the record something that he said. And you can't just strike from the record something bad that said because you don't like it. There are actually rules where if a person says something that otherwise violates the rules of evidence or some other judicial order, that you can have that statement removed. But that's not what happened here. That's simply the Mad Hatter blurting out that he should have killed a woman because she turned him down. That's not a basis to strike anything. If anything, he's making a good case why he needs to be arrested. This is crazy. That's beside the point. Just keep it going. Batman doesn't seem to really care too much whether or not he gets a fair trial. He just wants to drag it out. Obviously, we know why. In this next scene, we see the police are hot on his trail. This witness, she's obviously trying to influence the judge. So here, the prosecutor objects. Now, just as I mentioned before, everything is supposed to be written down during the trial. And so that's the same reason why there are speaking objections. If an attorney thinks that something that's about to be said or some kind of evidence is improper or doesn't follow the rules, they object and they give a reason why they're objecting. And so whether or not the judge agrees with the objection, it has to be a verbal out loud objection so it can be written down for the record so that when the case is appealed, the appellate court can review whether or not the trial judge made the right call on the objection. Now here, it appears that the witness is trying to influence the judge, which we know is Joker. Let's find out how they're trying to influence the judge. Oh. Yes, absolutely. The judge is laying in Harley Quinn's lap as she strokes his chest and his head. That's a very inappropriate action from a witness. Um, and if I was a lawyer in a case and I saw a witness doing that to the judge, I would immediately move for a mistrial. What makes you say that? Never mind. Do you have a statement? I just want to say, if there was no Batman, there'd be no Joker, and I'd never have Thank you, Batman. 
Now, that might be the best argument that any of the villains have about Batman creating the villains, which is that supposedly Batman created the Joker. Now, Joker's mythology has changed a lot over the years, and you can never really be too certain about his true origin. But one of the most popular stories is that the Joker was either a common criminal or someone who got roped into something above his head, and that while struggling with Batman, he fell into a vat of chemicals that turned him into the Joker. Now, Harley didn't actually go into any of those details. She just glossed, if there was no Batman, there would be no Joker. And so there's a little bit of a kernel of truth based on some of that origin story. But the thing is, a witness can only testify to the things that they have personal knowledge about. A witness should be able to testify to the things that, that he or she saw or heard themselves. Instead, Harley was describing about something that happened to the Joker. Now, the Joker is acting as the judge, so obviously he can't testify. But at the same time, Harley is one of the jurors, so she shouldn't be allowed to testify either. But if anyone is going to be testifying about the Batman creating Joker, it really should be Joker, unless there's another witness who personally observed it, and Harley didn't. The judge is making kisses at the witness. Definitely move for a mistrial. Uh huh. And I suppose it was that same loyalty I saw the last time you escaped and put me here. Who faked on you in hopes of getting time off? The witness is excused, but none of these witnesses have even been questioned by the prosecutor yet. Witnesses not only should be questioned by one attorney, but they should be cross-examined by the other attorney. Now, considering the prosecutor hasn't called any witnesses, I'm guessing Two-Face feels pretty confident that there's no reason for him to do any questioning whatsoever. But, you know, maybe Joker was right that the fix was in. It doesn't matter what happens. Witnesses should not attack an attorney questioning them, no matter how heated it gets. I don't know if uh, Scarecrow and the Mad Hatter are also acting as deputies or bailiffs in the courtroom, but fortunately they're there to restrain uh, Poison Ivy, because she's a certified homicidal maniac. Attacking the lawyer questioning her has got to be a dangerous thing. I think this 
This must be the only time the police save Batman instead of Batman saving the police. All right, court's back in session. Now, that was probably the shortest jury instructions we've ever heard. The judge just said to the jury, you've heard the evidence, consider your verdict. The reality is that in every single criminal trial, before a jury can go back to consider their verdict, they have to receive jury instructions. The Florida Supreme Court has created a series of instructions that need to be read in all criminal cases. These are instructions including, but not limited to, weighing the evidence, the presumption of innocence, judging the credibility of witnesses, and the elements of an offense. That is, what it is that the state needs to prove in order to prove someone guilty of an accused crime. In this, there wasn't any jury instruction whatsoever. They were just told to go consider. The other thing that we know that's different is that juries in Florida will deliberate outside the presence of the courtroom. The first order of business for the jury is they select a foreperson. That's the person who acts like the chairperson of a meeting and can kind of manage the jury's deliberations. And the discussions, the deliberations occur outside the presence of the courtroom, outside the presence of the judge, the lawyers, or the accused, and their discussions are sacrosanct. They are allowed to talk about pretty much almost anything that they want to talk about, and no one can actually um, require them to divulge what was said during those deliberations. Well, anyone except maybe a judge, right? They're free to discuss what happened. They don't have to. The jury in this case, they're just in open court deliberating and making the decision. That doesn't bode well considering this has been a kangaroo court the whole time, run by supervillains, people who all have a beef with Batman, and presided by the Joker who, even if he was aware of the rules of evidence, wouldn't follow them because he can't follow any rules. But who knows? I do believe that a good lawyer can make the difference in a criminal case. Even though the fix is in, let's see what happens. That's the classic defense attorney look for, well, I tried my best. Let's see. Your Honor, in light of Ms. Van Dorn's stirring defense, we have no choice but to find the defendant not guilty. Shocking. A not guilty verdict. Batman has been acquitted by a jury, not a jury of his own peers, but a jury of supervillains. They have actually acquitted him, even though members of the jury who acquitted him were the same people who were testifying against him. It's crazy. Now, the other thing to remember is that if this were in Florida, verdicts have to be unanimous. That means every person in the, ver in the jury have to agree with the verdict. If they were following that rule in the trial of Batman, that means every single one of these villains who testified against him, including Harley Quinn and the Mad Hatter, they themselves changed their opinion based on the defense attorney's stirring arguments and decided to find him not guilty. Defense attorney made a big difference. Is it going to help Batman in the end? Let's find out. She can't believe it. So Judge Joker has declared they're going to impose sentence on Batman and his attorney for losing, even though they actually won. So this has been a complete mockery of justice. I don't know what we were expecting with a murderous clown acting as a judge in a trial, but this has been an absolute mockery of the legal system. Now let's see, what's the execution? Dipping into a vat of acid? Now, wait a minute. It's after the trial that the Joker is trying to unmask the Batman. All right. 
earlier, we already figured out Batman was captured, he was drugged and rendered unconscious, and then he was put into a straitjacket. They had so many times to remove his mask, and they chose not to. What a bad, boneheaded move on the Joker. You can figure out where this is going to go. I see now there's a need for the things in you. But I'm still going to work toward a city that doesn't need Batman. Me too. I mean, that sounds nice and all. The fact is, Prosecutor Van Dorn is clearly biased from her experience of being kidnapped by supervillains, forced into Arkham Asylum to defend Batman. So she now believes that Batman, he's, he's a good guy for sure, but she now believes Batman doesn't cause extra problems. But that's, frankly... A ridiculous proposition. I think even reviewing the episode itself, even though they didn't follow the laws of procedure, we did find out that there's no shortage of criminally insane supervillains. That you've got the Mad Hatter, Killer Croc, the Riddler, the Joker, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, Two-Face, Scarecrow. All of these who picked up the theatricality of Batman and took their criminality and took it to the next level. Batman, Batman uses the billions of dollars of wealth that Bruce Wayne and his family have acquired in order to keep the fight as Batman. Instead, he could invest that money into the community. He could create drug rehabilitation programs, offer affordable psychiatric and medical health care for low-income people, Bruce Wayne could transform Gotham with his wealth and still remain the richest person in Gotham. But instead, he uses all of his money to fuel his adventures, dressing up as a Batonite, beating criminals to a pulp, causing the criminal justice system to become even more bloated, sending more criminals to court that result in an inevitable dismissal because he doesn't show up to court as a witness to help prosecute them. Any way you cut it, Batman might be helping like a Band-Aid one at a time, but overall he's making the situation much worse. Don't get me wrong, I love Batman. He's a great character. This is a great show and a great episode. But I don't know how anyone can be honest and actually look at Batman and not conclude that he's at least somewhat responsible for causing the problems in, in, this, uh, in the city of Gotham. Now that's all we've got for today for this particular episode, watching about Batman. Now, in honor of Warner Brothers releasing The Batman on March 4th, we're going to have additional videos about The Batman. So make sure that you keep watching. Make sure you like this video. Hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos, including the next in our Batman series of features. And we look forward to it. Be sure to leave comments and questions. Who knows? Maybe your question will be highlighted in our next video.